The actinide or actinoid IUPAC nomenclature series encompasses the 15 metallic chemical elements with atomic numbers from 89 to 103, actinium through lawrencium. Strictly speaking, both actinium and lawrencium have been labeled as group 3 elements, but both elements are often included in any general discussion of the chemistry of the actinide elements. Actinium is the more often omitted of the two, because its placement as a group 3 element is somewhat more common in texts and for semantic reasons, since Actinide means like actinium. It has been argued that actinium cannot logically be an actinide, even though IUPAC acknowledges its inclusion based on common usage. The actinide series derives its name from the first element in the series, actinium. The informal chemical symbol N is used in general discussions of actinide chemistry to refer to any actinide. All but one of the actinides are F block elements, with the exception being either actinium or lawrencium. The series mostly corresponds to the filling of the 5F electron shell, although actinium and thorium lack any F electrons, and curium and lawrencium have the same number as the preceding element. In comparison with the lanthanides, also mostly F block elements, the actinides show much more variable valence. They all have very large atomic and ionic radii and exhibit an unusually large range of physical properties. While actinium and the late actinides from americium onwards behave similarly to the lanthanides, the elements thorium, protactinium, and uranium are much more similar to transition metals in their chemistry, with neptunium and plutonium occupying an intermediate position. All actinides are radioactive and release energy upon radioactive decay, naturally occurring uranium and thorium, and synthetically produced plutonium are the most abundant actinides on Earth. These are used in nuclear reactors and nuclear weapons. Uranium and thorium also have diverse current or historical uses, and americium is used in the ionization chambers of most modern smoke detectors. Of the actinides, primordial thorium and uranium occur naturally in substantial quantities. The radioactive decay of uranium produces transient amounts of actinium and protactinium, and atoms of neptunium and plutonium are occasionally produced from transmutation reactions in uranium ores. The other actinides are purely synthetic elements. Nuclear weapons tests have released at least six actinides heavier than plutonium into the environment. Analysis of debris from a 1952 hydrogen bomb explosion showed the presence of americium, curium, berkelium, californium, einsteinium, and fermium. In presentations of the periodic table, the lanthanides and the actinides are customarily shown as two additional rows below the main body of the table, with placeholders or else a selected single element of each series, either lanthanum or lutetium, and either actinium or lorentium respectively shown in a single cell of the main table, between barium and hafnium, and radium and rutherfordium, respectively. This convention is entirely a matter of aesthetics and formatting practicality. A rarely used wide formatted periodic table inserts the lanthanide and actinide series in their proper places, as parts of the table's sixth and seventh rows periods. Discovery, isolation and synthesis Like the lanthanides, the actinides form a family of elements with similar properties. Within the actinides, there are two overlapping groups, transuranium elements, which follow uranium in the periodic table, and transplutonium elements, which follow plutonium. Compared to the lanthanides, which except for promethium are found in nature in appreciable quantities, most actinides are rare. The majority of them do not even occur in nature, and of those that do, only thorium and uranium do so in more than trace quantities. The most abundant or easily synthesized actinides are uranium and thorium, followed by plutonium, americium, actinium, protactinium, neptunium, and curium. The existence of transuranium elements was suggested by Enrico Fermi based on his experiments in 1934. However, even though four actinides were known by that time, it was not yet understood that they formed a family similar to lanthanides. The prevailing view that dominated early research into transuranics was that they were regular elements in the seventh period, with thorium, protactinium and uranium corresponding to sixth period hafnium, tantalum and tungsten, respectively. Synthesis of transuranics gradually undermined this point of view. By 1944 an observation that curium failed to exhibit oxidation states above 4 whereas its supposed sixth period homologue, platinum, can reach oxidation state of 6 prompted Glenn Seaborg to formulate a so-called «actinide hypothesis». 
Studies of known actinides and discoveries of further transuranic elements provided more data in support of this point of view, but the phrase, actinide hypothesis, the implication being that a hypothesis is something that has not been decisively proven remained in active use by scientists through the late 1950s. At present, there are two major methods of producing isotopes of transplutonium elements, one irradiation of the lighter elements with either neutrons or two accelerated charged particles. The first method is most important for applications, as only neutron irradiation using nuclear reactors allows the production of sizable amounts of synthetic actinides, however, it is limited to relatively light elements. The advantage of the second method is that elements heavier than plutonium, as well as neutron deficient isotopes, can be obtained, which are not formed during neutron irradiation. In 1962 1966, there were attempts in the United States to produce transplutonium isotopes using a series of six underground nuclear explosions. Small samples of rock were extracted from the blast area immediately after the test to study the explosion products, but no isotopes with mass number greater than 257 could be detected, despite predictions that such isotopes would have relatively long half-lives of alpha decay. This non-observation was attributed to spontaneous fission owing to the large speed of the products and to other decay channels, such as neutron emission and nuclear fission. From actinium to uranium Uranium and thorium were the first actinides discovered. Uranium was identified in 1789 by the German chemist Martin Heinrich Klaproth in pitchblende ore. He named it after the planet Uranus, which had been discovered only eight years earlier. Klaproth was able to precipitate a yellow compound likely sodium diurinate by dissolving pitchblende in nitric acid and neutralizing the solution with sodium hydroxide. He then reduced the obtained yellow powder with charcoal, and extracted a black substance that he mistook for metal. Only 60 years later, the French scientist Eugène Melchior Poligo identified it as uranium oxide. He also isolated the first sample of uranium metal by heating uranium tetrachloride with metallic potassium. The atomic mass of uranium was then calculated as 120, but Dmitri Mendeleev in 1872 corrected it to 240 using his periodicity laws. This value was confirmed experimentally in 1882 by K. Zimmermann. Thorium oxide was discovered by Friedrich Wohler in the mineral thorionite, which was found in Norway 1827. Johns Jacob Berzelius characterized this material in more detail by in 1828. By reduction of thorium tetrachloride with potassium, he isolated the metal and named it thorium after the Norse god of thunder and lightning Thor. The same isolation method was later used by Poligo for uranium. Actinium was discovered in 1899 by Andre Louis Debirne, an assistant of Marie Curie, in the pitchblende waste left after removal of radium and polonium. He described the substance in 1899 as similar to titanium and in 1900 as similar to thorium. The discovery of actinium by Debirne was however questioned in 1971 and 2000, arguing that Debirne's publications in 1904 contradicted his earlier work of 1899–1900. This view instead credits the 1902 work of Friedrich Oskar Giesel, who discovered a radioactive element named amanium that behaved similarly to lanthanum. The name actinium comes from the Greek octis, octinos, octis octinos meaning beam or ray. This metal was discovered not by its own radiation but by the radiation of the daughter products. Owing to the close similarity of actinium and lanthanum and low abundance, pure actinium could only be produced in 1950. The term actinide was probably introduced by Victor Goldschmidt in 1937. Protactinium was possibly isolated in 1900 by William Crookes. It was first identified in 1913, when Casimir Fagens and Oswald Helmuth Göring encountered the short-lived isotope 234 minutes) during their studies of the 238U decay. They named the new element brevium from Latin brevis meaning brief, the name was changed to protoactinium from Greek protos plus octis meaning, first beam element. In 1918 when two groups of scientists, led by the Austrian Lise Meitner and Otto Hahn of Germany and Frederick Soddy and John Cranston of Great Britain, independently discovered the much longer-lived 231 pascals. The name was shortened to protactinium in 1949. 
This element was little characterised until 1960, when A. G. Maddock and his co-workers in the UK isolated 130 grams of protactinium from 60 tonnes of waste left after extraction of uranium from its ore. Neptunium and above Neptunium named for the planet Neptune, the next planet out from Uranus, after which uranium was named was discovered by Edwin Macmillan and Philip H. Abelson in 1940 in Berkeley, California. They produced the 239 Napers isotope half-life equals 2.4 days by bombarding uranium with slow neutrons. It was the first transuranium element produced synthetically. Transuranium elements do not occur in sizable quantities in nature and are commonly synthesized via nuclear reactions conducted with nuclear reactors. For example, under irradiation with reactor neutrons, uranium-238 partially converts to plutonium-239 U 92 238 N 0 1 U 92 239 23 5 min beta minus NP 93 239 2.3 days Beta minus Pu ninety four two hundred thirty nine two point four ten four years Alpha U ninety two Two hundred thirty five Display style C E carrot two hundred thirty eight underscore ninety two U plus underscore zero carrot one N two underscore ninety two carrot two hundred thirty nine U two beta carrot twenty three point five C E min underscore ninety three carrot two hundred thirty nine N P two beta carrot two point three C E days underscore ninety four carrot two hundred thirty nine Poo left C E two alpha two point four C D O T ten carrot four C E years right C E carrot two hundred thirty five underscore ninety two U This synthesis reaction was used by Fermi and his collaborators in their design of the reactors located at the Hanford site, which produced significant amounts of plutonium two hundred thirty nine for the nuclear weapons of the Manhattan Project and the United States post war nuclear arsenal. Actinides with the highest mass numbers are synthesized by bombarding uranium, plutonium, curium, and californium with ions of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, neon, or boron in a particle accelerator. So, nobelium was produced by bombarding uranium-238 with neon-22 as U-92 238 plus Ne 10 22 No 102 256 plus 4 0 1 n Display style C E underscore ninety two carrot two hundred thirty eight U plus underscore ten carrot twenty two nay to underscore one hundred two carrot two hundred fifty six no plus four underscore zero to the power of one N. The first isotopes of transplutonium elements, americium-241 and curium-242, were synthesized in 1944 by Glenn T. Seaborg, Ralph A. James and Albert Giorso. Curium-242 was obtained by bombarding plutonium-239 with 32 MeV alpha particles. Pooh 94 
239 plus he 2 4 cm 96 242 plus n 0 1 Display style C E underscore ninety four carrot two hundred thirty nine Poo plus underscore two to the power of four he to underscore ninety six carrot two hundred forty two CM plus underscore zero to the power of one N. The americium two hundred forty one and curium two hundred forty two isotopes also were produced by irradiating plutonium in a nuclear reactor. The latter element was named after Marie Curie and her husband Pierre who are noted for discovering radium and for their work in radioactivity. Bombarding curium-242 with alpha particles resulted in an isotope of californium-245 CF, 1950, and a similar procedure yielded in 1949 berkelium-243 from americium-241. The new elements were named after Berkeley, California, by analogy with its lanthanide homologue terbium, which was named after the village of Utterby in Sweden. In 1945, B.B. Cunningham obtained the first bulk chemical compound of a transplutonium element, namely americium hydroxide. Over the next three to four years, milligram quantities of americium and microgram amounts of curium were accumulated that allowed production of isotopes of berkelium, Thomson, 1949, and californium, Thomson, 1950. Sizable amounts of these elements were produced only in 1958. Burris B. Cunningham and Stanley G. Thompson, and the first californium compound, 0.3 micrograms of CFOCl, was obtained only in 1960 by B. B. Cunningham and J. C. Wallman. Einsteinium and fermium were identified in 1952 1953 in the fallout from the Ivy Mike. Nuclear test the 1st of November 1952 the first successful test of a hydrogen bomb instantaneous exposure of uranium 238 to a large neutron flux resulting from the explosion produced heavy isotopes of uranium including uranium 253 and uranium 255 and their beta decay yielded einsteinium 253 and fermium 255 the discovery of the new elements and the new data on neutron capture were initially kept secret on the orders of the U.S. military until 1955 due to Cold War tensions. Nevertheless, the Berkeley team were able to prepare Einsteinium and Fermium by civilian means, through the neutron bombardment of plutonium-239, and published this work in 1954 with the disclaimer that it was not the first studies that had been carried out on the elements. The Ivy Mike Studies were declassified and published in 1955. The first significant submicrograms amounts of Einsteinium were produced in 1961 by Cunningham and colleagues, but this has not been done for fermium yet. The first isotope of Mendelevium, 256 MD, half-life 87 minutes, was synthesized by Albert Giorso, Glenn T. Seaborg, Gregory R. Chopin, Bernard G. Harvey, and Stanley G. Thompson when they bombarded an 253s target with alpha particles in the 60-inch cyclotron of Berkeley Radiation Laboratory. This was the first isotope of any element to be synthesized one atom at a time there were several attempts to obtain isotopes of nobelium by swedish 1957 and american 1958 groups but the first reliable result was the synthesis of 256 no by the russian group georgi flyer et al in 1965 as acknowledged by the iupac in 1992 in their experiments, Flyerov et al. bombarded uranium-238 with neon-22. In 1961, Giorso et al. obtained the first isotope of lawrencium by irradiating californium, mostly californium-252, with boron-10 and boron-11 ions. The mass number of this isotope was not clearly established, possibly 258 or 259 at the time. In 1965, 256 LR was synthesized by Flyerov et al. from 243M and 18O. Thus IUPAC recognized the nuclear physics teams at Dubna and Berkeley as the co-discoverers of Lorentzium. Isotopes
31 isotopes of actinium and 8 excited isomeric states of some of its nuclides were identified by 2010. Three isotopes, 225 AC, 227 AC and 228 AC, were found in nature and the others were produced in the laboratory, only the three natural isotopes are used in applications. Actinium-225 is a member of the radioactive Neptunium series, it was first discovered in 1947 as a decay product of uranium-233, it is an alpha emitter with a half-life of 10 days. Actinium-225 is less available than actinium-228, but is more promising in radiotracer applications. Actinium-227 occurs in all uranium ores, but in small quantities. One gram of uranium in radioactive equilibrium contains only 2 times 10 minus 10 gram of 227 AC. Actinium-228 is a member of the radioactive thorium series formed by the decay of 228 Ra, it is a beta emitter with a half-life of 6.15 hours. In one ton of thorium there is 5 times 10 minus 8 gram of 228 AC. It was discovered by Otto Hahn in 1906. 29 isotopes of protactinium are known with mass numbers 212 to 240 as well as 3 excited isomeric states. Only 231 pascals and 234 pascals have been found in nature. All the isotopes have short lifetime except for protactinium 231, half-life 32760 years. The most important isotopes are 231 pascals and 233 pascals, which is an intermediate product in obtaining uranium-233 and is the most affordable among artificial isotopes of protactinium. 233 pascals has convenient half-life and energy of gamma radiation, and thus was used in most studies of protactinium chemistry. Protactinium-233 is a beta emitter with a half-life of 26.97 days. Uranium has the highest number 25 of both natural and synthetic isotopes. They have mass numbers of 217 to 242, and three of them, 234U, 235U, and 238U, are present in appreciable quantities in nature. Among others, the most important is 233U, which is a final product of transformations of 232Th irradiated by slow neutrons. 233U has a much higher fission efficiency by low energy thermal neutrons, compared e.g. with 235U. Most uranium chemistry studies were carried out on uranium-238 owing to its long half-life of 4.4 times 109 years. There are 19 isotopes of neptunium with mass numbers from 225 to 244, they are all highly radioactive. The most popular among scientists are long-lived 237 napers T1 half equals 2.20 times 106 years and short-lived 239 napers 238 napers T1 2 to 2 days 16 isotopes of americium are known with mass numbers from 232 to 248 the most important are 241Am and 243Am, which are alpha emitters and also emit soft, but intense gamma rays, both of them can be obtained in an isotopically pure form. Chemical properties of americium were first studied with 241Am, but later shifted to 243Am, which is almost 20 times less radioactive. The disadvantage of 243M is production of the short-lived daughter isotope 239 napers, which has to be considered in the data analysis. Among 19 isotopes of curium, the most accessible are 242Cm and 244Cm. They are alpha emitters, but with much shorter lifetime than the americium isotopes. These isotopes emit almost no gamma radiation, but undergo spontaneous fission with the associated emission of neutrons. More long-lived isotopes of curium 245 to 248 cm all alpha emitters are formed as a mixture during neutron irradiation of plutonium or americium. Upon short irradiation this mixture is dominated by 246 cm and then 248 cm begins to accumulate. Both of these isotopes especially 248 cm have a longer half-life 3.48 times 105 years and are much more convenient for carrying out chemical research than 242 cm and 244 cm but they also have a rather high rate of spontaneous fission. 
247 cm has the longest lifetime among isotopes of curium 1.56 times 107 years, but is not formed in large quantities because of the strong fission induced by thermal neutrons. 14 isotopes of berkelium were identified with mass numbers 238–252. Only 249 BK is available in large quantities, it has a relatively short half-life of 330 days and emits mostly soft beta particles, which are inconvenient for detection. Its alpha radiation is rather weak 1.45–10−3% with respect to beta radiation, but is sometimes used to detect this isotope. 247BK is an alpha emitter with a long half-life of 1380 years, but it is hard to obtain in appreciable quantities. It is not formed upon neutron irradiation of plutonium because of the beta stability of isotopes of curium isotopes with mass number below 248, isotopes of californium with mass numbers 237 to 256 are formed in nuclear reactors. Californium 253 is a beta emitter and the rest are alpha emitters. The isotopes with even mass numbers 250 cf, 252 cf and 254 cf have a high rate of spontaneous fission, especially 254 cf of which 99.7% decays by spontaneous fission. Californium 249 has a relatively long half-life, 352 years, weak spontaneous fission and strong gamma emission that facilitates its identification. 249 CF is not formed in large quantities in a nuclear reactor because of the slow beta decay of the parent isotope 249 BK and a large cross-section of interaction with neutrons, but it can be accumulated in the isotopically pure form as the beta decay product of preselected 249 BK. Californium produced by reactor irradiation of plutonium mostly consists of 250 CF and 252 CF, the latter being predominant for large neutron fluences, and its study is hindered by the strong neutron radiation. Among the 16 known isotopes of Einsteinium with mass numbers from 241 to 257 the most affordable is 253 S. It is an alpha emitter with a half-life of 20.47 days, a relatively weak gamma emission and small spontaneous fission rate as compared with the isotopes of californium. Prolonged neutron irradiation also produces a long-lived isotope 254S 275.5 days, 19 isotopes of fermium are known with mass numbers of 242 to 260, 254 fm, 255 fm and 256 fm are alpha emitters with a short half-life hours, which can be isolated in significant amounts. 257 fm T1 half. 100 days can accumulate upon prolonged and strong irradiation. All these isotopes are characterized by high rates of spontaneous fission. Among the 15 known isotopes of mendelevium, mass numbers from 245 to 260, the most studied is 256 Md, which mainly decays through the electron capture. Alpha radiation is approximately equals 10% with the half-life of 77 minutes. Another alpha emitter, 258 Md, has a half-life of 53 days. Both these isotopes are produced from rare Einsteinium 253S and 255S respectively that therefore limits their availability. Long-lived isotopes of nobelium and isotopes of lawrencium and of heavier elements have relatively short half-lives. For nobelium 11 isotopes are known with mass numbers 250 to 260 and 262. The chemical properties of nobelium and lawrencium were studied with 255 No T1/2 3 minutes and 256 lr t1/2 35s the longest lived nobelium isotope 259 no has a half life of 1.5 hours among all of these the only isotopes that occur in sufficient quantities in nature to be detected in anything more than traces and have a measurable contribution to the atomic weights of the actinides are the primordial 232th 235u and 238u and three long lived decay products of natural uranium 230th 231 pascals and 234u 
Natural thorium consists of 0.02 230th and 99.98 232th. Natural protactinium consists of 100% pascals, and natural uranium consists of 0.0054 234u, 0.7204 235u, and 99.2742 238u. Distribution in nature Thorium and uranium are the most abundant actinides in nature with the respective mass concentrations of 16 ppm and 4 ppm. Uranium mostly occurs in the Earth's crust as a mixture of its oxides in the minerals uraninite, which is also called pitch blend because of its black color. There are several dozens of other uranium minerals such as carnotite KUO2VO43H2O and autunite ca uo 2 po 4 2 nh 20 the isotopic composition of natural uranium is 238U, relative abundance 99.2742%, 235U, 0.7204%, and 234U, 0.0054%. Of these, 238U has the largest half-life of 4.51 times 109 years. The worldwide production of uranium in 2009 amounted to 50,572 tons, of which 27.3% was mined in Kazakhstan. Other important uranium mining countries are Canada 20.1%, Australia 15.7%, Namibia 9.1%, Russia 7.0%, and Niger 6.4%. The most abundant thorium minerals are thorionite though 2, thorite the ZO4 and monazite TH CA CE PO4. Most thorium minerals contain uranium and vice versa and they all have significant fraction of lanthanides. Rich deposits of thorium minerals are located in the United States 440,000 tons, Australia and India approximately 300,000 tons each and Canada approximately 100,000 tons. The abundance of actinium in the earth's crust is only about 5 times 10 minus 15%. Actinium is mostly present in uranium containing but also in other minerals though in much smaller quantities. The content of actinium in most natural objects corresponds to the isotopic equilibrium of parent isotope 235U, and it is not affected by the weak AC migration. Protactinium is more abundant in the Earth's crust than actinium. It was discovered in the uranium ore in 1913 by Fagens and Goring. As actinium, the distribution of protactinium follows that of 235U, the half-life of the longest-lived isotope of neptunium, 237 napers, is negligible compared to the age of the Earth. Thus neptunium is present in nature in negligible amounts produced as intermediate decay products of other isotopes. Traces of plutonium in uranium minerals were first found in 1942, and the more systematic results on 239 Pu are summarized in the table no other plutonium isotopes could be detected in those samples. The upper limit of abundance of the longest living isotope of plutonium, 244 Pu, is 3 10 20%. Plutonium could not be detected in samples of lunar soil. Owing to its scarcity in nature, most plutonium is produced synthetically. Extraction Owing to the low abundance of actinides, their extraction is a complex, multi-step process. Fluorides of actinides are usually used because they are insoluble in water and can be easily separated with redox reactions. Fluorides are reduced with calcium, magnesium or barium. 2 AMF 3 Plus three Ba eleven fifty minus thirteen fifty C three BAF two plus two M P U F four plus two Ba 
1200 C 2 BAF 2 plus Ku UF 4 plus 2 MG greater than 500 C U plus 2 MGF two Display style begin array L C E two A M F three plus three ba two C E eleven fifty to thirteen fifty carat cert C three barium fluoride plus two M C E P U F four plus two ba two C E twelve hundred carat cert C two barium fluoride plus P U C E U F four plus two megagrams two C E greater than five hundred carat cert C U plus two magnesium fluoride end array among the actinides, thorium and uranium are the easiest to isolate. Thorium is extracted mostly from monazite. Thorium pyrophosphate (THP207) is reacted with nitric acid, and the produced thorium nitrate treated with tributyl phosphate. Rare earth impurities are separated by increasing the pH in sulfate solution. In another extraction method, monazite is decomposed with a 45% aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide at 140 degrees Celsius. Mixed metal hydroxides are extracted first, filtered at 80 degrees Celsius, washed with water and dissolved with concentrated hydrochloric acid. Next, the acidic solution is neutralized with hydroxides to pH equals 5. Eight that results in precipitation of thorium hydroxide th contaminated with approximately 3% of rare earth hydroxides, the rest of rare earth hydroxides remains in solution. Thorium hydroxide is dissolved in an inorganic acid and then purified from the rare earth elements. An efficient method is the dissolution of thorium hydroxide in nitric acid, because the resulting solution can be purified by extraction with organic solvents. Th 4 plus 4 HNO3 Th 4 plus 4 H2O metallic thorium is separated from the anhydrous oxide, chloride, or fluoride by reacting it with calcium in an inert atmosphere. Though 2 plus 2 Ca2 Sau plus sometimes thorium is extracted by electrolysis of a fluoride in a mixture of sodium and potassium chloride at 700 to 800 degrees Celsius in a graphite crucible. Highly pure thorium can be extracted from its iodide with the crystal bar process. Uranium is extracted from its ores in various ways. In one method, the ore is burned and then reacted with nitric acid to convert uranium into a dissolved state. Treating the solution with a solution of tributyl phosphate TBP in kerosene transforms uranium into an organic form UO2 NO3 TBP2. The insoluble impurities are filtered and the uranium is extracted by reaction with hydroxides as NH4 2U207 or with hydrogen peroxide as UO4 2H2O. When the uranium ore is rich in such minerals as dolomite, magnesite, etc., those minerals consume much acid. In this case, the carbonate method is used for uranium extraction. Its main component is an aqueous solution of sodium carbonate, which converts uranium into a complex UO2 CO3 3 -4 which is stable in aqueous solutions at low concentrations of hydroxide ions. The advantages of the sodium carbonate method are that the chemicals have low corrosivity compared to nitrates and that most non-uranium metals precipitate from the solution. The disadvantage is that tetravalent uranium compounds precipitate as well. Therefore, the uranium ore is treated with sodium carbonate at elevated temperature and under oxygen pressure. 2UO2 plus O2 plus 6CO2 minus 3UO2 CO3 4 minus. This equation suggests that the best solvent for the uranium carbonate processing is a mixture of carbonate with bicarbonate. At high pH, this results in precipitation of diuranate, which is treated with hydrogen in the presence of nickel yielding an insoluble uranium tetracarbonate. Another separation method uses polymeric resins as a polyelectrolyte. Ion exchange processes in the resins result in separation of uranium. 
Uranium from resins is washed with a solution of ammonium nitrate or nitric acid that yields uranyl nitrate, UO2 NO3 H2O. When heated, it turns into UO3, which is converted to UO2 with hydrogen. UO3 plus H2UO2 plus H2O reacting uranium dioxide with hydrofluoric acid changes it to uranium tetrafluoride, which yields uranium metal upon reaction with magnesium metal. 4HF plus UO2 UF4 plus 2H2OTO extract plutonium, neutron irradiated uranium is dissolved in nitric acid, and a reducing agent iron -sulfate, or H2O2, is added to the resulting solution. This addition changes the oxidation state of plutonium from plus 6 to plus 4, while uranium remains in the form of uranyl nitrate UO2 NO3 the solution is treated with a reducing agent and neutralized with ammonium carbonate to pH equals 8 that results in precipitation of Pu4 plus compounds. In another method, Pu4 plus and UO2 plus 2 are first extracted with tributyl phosphate, then reacted with hydrazine washing out the recovered plutonium. The major difficulty in separation of actinium is the similarity of its properties with those of lanthanum. Thus actinium is either synthesized in nuclear reactions from isotopes of radium or separated using ion exchange procedures. Properties Actinides have similar properties to lanthanides. The 6d and 7s electronic shells are filled in actinium and thorium, and the 5f shell is being filled with further increase in atomic number, the 4f shell is filled in the lanthanides. The first experimental evidence for the filling of the 5F shell in actinides was obtained by Macmillan and Abelson in 1940. As in lanthanides see lanthanide contraction, the ionic radius of actinides monotonically decreases with atomic number see also Aufbau principle. Physical properties Actinides are typical metals. All of them are soft and have a silvery color but tarnish in air, relatively high density and plasticity. Some of them can be cut with a knife. Their electrical resistivity varies between 15 and 150 microohms cm. The hardness of thorium is similar to that of soft steel, so heated pure thorium can be rolled in sheets and pulled into wire. Thorium is nearly half as dense as uranium and plutonium, but is harder than either of them. All actinides are radioactive, paramagnetic, and, with the exception of actinium, have several crystalline phases plutonium has seven, and uranium, neptunium, and californium three. The crystal structures of protactinium, uranium, neptunium and plutonium do not have clear analogues among the lanthanides and are more similar to those of the 3D transition metals. All actinides are pyrophoric, especially when finely divided, that is they spontaneously ignite upon reaction with air. The melting point of actinides does not have a clear dependence on the number of f electrons. The unusually low melting point of neptunium and plutonium approximately 640 degrees Celsius is explained by hybridization of 5f and 6d orbitals and the formation of directional bonds in these metals. Chemical properties like the lanthanides, all actinides are highly reactive with halogens and calcogens, however, the actinides react more easily. Actinides, especially those with a small number of 5f electrons, are prone to hybridization. This is explained by the similarity of the electron energies at the 5f, 7s and 6d shells. Most actinides exhibit a larger variety of valence states, and the most stable are plus 6 for uranium, plus 5 for protactinium and neptunium, plus 4 for thorium and plutonium and plus 3 for actinium and other actinides. Chemically, actinium is similar to lanthanum, which is explained by their similar ionic radii and electronic structure. Like lanthanum, actinium has oxidation of plus 3, but it is less reactive and has more pronounced basic properties. Among other trivalent actinides AC3 plus is least acidic, i.e. has the weakest tendency to hydrolyze in aqueous solutions, thorium is rather active chemically. Owing to lack of electrons on 6d and 5f orbitals, the tetravalent thorium compounds are colorless. At pH the complex chemical behavior of protactinium is a consequence of the start of the filling of the 5F shell in this element. Uranium has a valence from 3 to 6, the last being most stable. In the hexavalent state, uranium is very similar to the group 6 elements. Many compounds of uranium IV and uranium V are non-stoichiometric, i.e. have variable composition. 
For example, the actual chemical formula of uranium dioxide is UO2 plus X, where X varies between 0.4 and 0.32. Uranium v compounds are weak oxidants. Most of them contain the linear uranyl group, UO2 plus 2. Between 4 and 6 ligands can be accommodated in an equatorial plane perpendicular to the uranyl group. The uranyl group acts as a hard acid and forms stronger complexes with oxygen donor ligands than with nitrogen donor ligands. NPO2 plus 2 and PuO2 plus 2 are also the common form of NP and PU in the plus 6 oxidation state. Uranium IV compounds exhibit reducing properties, e.g., they are easily oxidized by atmospheric oxygen. Uranium is a very strong reducing agent. Owing to the presence of D-shell, uranium as well as many other actinides forms organometallic compounds, such as UIII C5H5-3 and UIV C5H5-4. Neptunium has valence states from 3 to 7, which can be simultaneously observed in solutions. The most stable state in solution is plus 5, but the valence plus 4 is preferred in solid neptunium compounds. Neptunium metal is very reactive. Ions of neptunium are prone to hydrolysis and formation of coordination compounds. Plutonium also exhibits valence states between 3 and 7 inclusive, and thus is chemically similar to neptunium and uranium. It is highly reactive, and quickly forms an oxide film in air. Plutonium reacts with hydrogen even at temperatures as low as 25 to 50 degrees Celsius, it also easily forms halides and intermetallic compounds. Hydrolysis reactions of plutonium ions of different oxidation states are quite diverse. Plutonium v can enter polymerization reactions. The largest chemical diversity among actinides is observed in americium, which can have valence between 2 and 6. Divalent americium is obtained only in dry compounds and non aqueous solutions. Acetonitrile. Oxidation states plus 3, plus 5, and plus 6 are typical for aqueous solutions, but also in the solid state. Tetravalent americium forms stable solid compounds dioxide, fluoride and hydroxide as well as complexes in aqueous solutions. It was reported that in alkaline solution americium can be oxidized to the heptavalent state, but these data proved erroneous. The most stable valence of americium is 3 in the aqueous solutions and 3 or 4 in solid compounds. Valence 3 is dominant in all subsequent elements up to lawrencium with the exception of nobelium. Curium can be tetravalent in solids fluoride, dioxide. Berkelium, along with a valence of plus 3, also shows the valence of plus 4, more stable than that of curium. The valence 4 is observed in solid fluoride and dioxide. The stability of BK4 plus in aqueous solution is close to that of CE4 plus. Only valence 3 was observed for californium, einsteinium and fermium. The divalent state is proven for mendelevium and nobelium, and in nobelium it is more stable than the trivalent state. Lorentium shows valence 3 both in solutions and solids. The redox potential E M 4 plus Anyo 2 2 Plus display style C E method E underscore F R A C M carrot four plus on your two carrot two plus increases from minus zero point three two volts in uranium through zero point three four volts N P and one point zero four volts PU to one point three four volts in americium revealing the increasing reduction ability of the N four plus ion from americium to uranium. All actinides form N3 hydrides of black color with salt-like properties. Actinides also produce carbides with the general formula of ANC or ANC2, U2C3 for uranium, as well as sulfides and 2S3 and ANS2. Compounds Oxides and hydroxides an actinide asterisk asterisk depending on the isotope some actinides can exist in several oxide forms such as an 2O3, onyo 2 and 2O5 and onyo 3 For all actinides, oxides onyo 3 are amphoteric and an 2O3, onyo 2 and an 2O5 are basic, they easily react with water, forming bases. 
and 2O3 plus 3H2O2 and O3. These bases are poorly soluble in water and by their activity are close to the hydroxides of rare earth metals. The strongest base is of actinium. All compounds of actinium are colorless, except for black actinium sulfide Ac2S3. Dioxides of tetravalent actinides crystallize in the cubic system, same as in calcium fluoride. Thorium reacting with oxygen exclusively forms the dioxide Th plus O 2 1000 C though 2 text thorium text dioxide display style ce th plus o 22 ce 1000 carat circ c overbrace though 2 carat text thorium dioxide Thorium dioxide is a refractory material with the highest melting point among any known oxide 3390 degrees Celsius. Adding 0.8 to 1% though 2 to tungsten stabilizes its structure, so the doped filaments have better mechanical stability to vibrations. To dissolve though 2 in acids, it is heated to 500 to 600 degrees Celsius. Heating above 600 degrees Celsius produces a very resistant to acids and other reagents form of though 2. Small addition of fluoride ions catalyzes dissolution of thorium dioxide in acids. Two protactinium oxides have been obtained, PAU2 and PA2O5 white. the former is isomorphic with THO2 and the latter is easier to obtain. Both oxides are basic, and PA5 is a weak, poorly soluble base. Decomposition of certain salts of uranium, for example UO2 and O3 6H2O in air at 400 degrees Celsius, yields orange or yellow UO3. This oxide is amphoteric and forms several hydroxides, the most stable being UO2. O2. Reaction of uranium v oxide with hydrogen results in uranium dioxide, which is similar in its properties with O2. This oxide is also basic and corresponds to the uranium hydroxide U -O Plutonium, neptunium and americium form two basic oxides, and 2O3 and Anyo2. Neptunium trioxide is unstable, thus, only NP3O8 could be obtained so far. However, the oxides of plutonium and neptunium with the chemical formula Anyo2 and An2O3 are well characterized. Salts Asterisk and actinide asterisk asterisk depending on the isotopes. Actinides easily react with halogens forming salts with the formulas MX3 and MX4 X equals halogen. So the first berkelium compound, BKCl3, was synthesized in 1962 with an amount of 3 ng. Like the halogens of rare earth elements, actinide chlorides, bromides, and iodides are water-soluble, and fluorides are insoluble. Uranium easily yields a colorless hexafluoride, which sublimates at a temperature of 56.5 degrees Celsius. Because of its volatility, it is used in the separation of uranium isotopes with gas centrifuge or gaseous diffusion. Actinide hexafluorides have properties close to anhydrides. They are very sensitive to moisture and hydrolyze forming Anyo 2 f 2 The pentachloride and black hexachloride of uranium were synthesized, but they are both unstable. Action of acids on actinides yields salts, and if the acids are non oxidizing, then the actinide in the salt is in low valence state. U plus 2H2SO4 U 2 plus 2H2 2 Pu plus 6 HCl2 PuCl3 plus 3 H2 However, in these reactions the regenerating hydrogen can react with the metal, forming the corresponding hydride. Uranium reacts with acids and water much more easily than thorium. Actinide salts can also be obtained by dissolving the corresponding hydroxides in acids. Nitrates, chlorides, sulfates and perchlorates of actinides are water-soluble. When crystallizing from aqueous solutions, these salts forming a hydrates, such as Th 46 h 20 Th 29 h 20 and Pu 2 37 h 20 Salts of high valence actinides easily hydrolyze. 
So, colorless sulfate, chloride, perchlorate and nitrate of thorium transform into basic salts with formulas Th 2 so 4 and Th 3 and 3 The solubility and insolubility of trivalent and tetravalent actinides is like that of lanthanide salts. So phosphates, fluorides, oxalates, iodates and carbonates of actinides are weakly soluble in water, they precipitate as hydrates, such as THF43H2O and th 23H2O. Actinides with oxidation state plus 6, except for the ANYO22 plus type cations, form ANYO4 and 207 and other complex anions. For example, uranium, neptunium and plutonium form salts of the Na2U04 and NH4-2U207 types. In comparison with lanthanides, actinides more easily form coordination compounds, and this ability increases with the actinide valence. Trivalent actinides do not form fluoride coordination compounds, whereas tetravalent thorium forms K2THF6, KTHF5, and even K5THF9 complexes. Thorium also forms the corresponding sulfates, for example, sodium sulfate Th 25 h 20 nitrates, and thiocyanates. Salts with the general formula and 2 th 3 6 nh 20 are of coordination nature, with the coordination number of thorium equal to 12. Even easier is to produce complex salts of pentavalent and hexavalent actinides. The most stable coordination compounds of actinides, tetravalent thorium and uranium, are obtained in reactions with diketones, e.g. acetylacetone. Applications while actinides have some established daily life applications, such as in smoke detectors and gas mantles they are mostly used in nuclear weapons and use as a fuel in nuclear reactors. The last two areas exploit the property of actinides to release enormous energy in nuclear reactions, which under certain conditions may become self-sustaining chain reaction. The most important isotope for nuclear power applications is uranium-235. It is used in the thermal reactor, and its concentration in natural uranium does not exceed 0.72%. This isotope strongly absorbs thermal neutrons releasing much energy. One fission act of 1 gram of 235U converts into about 1 MW day. Of importance, is that 23592U emits more neutrons than it absorbs. Upon reaching the critical Massachusetts, 23592U enters into a self sustaining chain reaction. Typically, uranium nucleus is divided into two fragments with the release of 2 to 3 neutrons, for example, 23592U plus 10N11545RH plus 11847 AG plus 310. Other promising actinide isotopes for nuclear power are thorium 232 and its product from the thorium fuel cycle, uranium 233. Emission of neutrons during the fission of uranium is important not only for maintaining the nuclear chain reaction, but also for the synthesis of the heavier actinides. Uranium-239 converts via beta decay into plutonium-239, which, like uranium-235, is capable of spontaneous fission. The world's first nuclear reactors were built not for energy, but for producing plutonium-239 for nuclear weapons. About half of the produced thorium is used as the light emitting material of gas mantles. Thorium is also added into multi-component alloys of magnesium and zinc. So the MGTH alloys are light and strong, but also have high melting point and ductility and thus are widely used in the aviation industry and in the production of missiles. Thorium also has good electron emission properties, with long lifetime and low potential barrier for the emission. The relative content of thorium and uranium isotopes is widely used to estimate the age of various objects, including stars. See radiometric dating. The major application of plutonium has been in nuclear weapons, where the isotope plutonium 239 was a key component due to its ease of fission and availability. Plutonium based designs allow reducing the critical mass to about a third of that for uranium 235. The fat man Type plutonium bombs produced during the Manhattan Project used explosive compression of plutonium to obtain significantly higher densities than normal, combined with a central neutron source to begin the reaction and increase efficiency. 
Thus only 6.2 kg of plutonium was needed for an explosive yield equivalent to 20 kilotons of TNT. See also nuclear weapon design. Hypothetically, as little as 4 kg of plutonium and maybe even less could be used to make a single atomic bomb using very sophisticated assembly designs. Plutonium 238 is potentially more efficient isotope for nuclear reactors, since it has smaller critical mass than uranium 235, but it continues to release much thermal energy with G by decay even when the fission chain reaction is stopped by control rods. Its application is limited by the high price about United States dollars per gram. This isotope has been used in thermopiles and water distillation systems of some space satellites and stations. So Galileo and Apollo spacecraft e.g. Apollo 14 had heaters powered by kilogram quantities of plutonium 238 oxide. This heat is also transformed into electricity with thermopiles. The decay of plutonium 238 produces relatively harmless alpha particles and is not accompanied by gamma irradiation. Therefore, this isotope approximately 160 mg is used as the energy source in heart pacemakers where it lasts about 5 times longer than conventional batteries. Actinium 227 is used as a neutron source. Its high specific energy 14.5 with G and the possibility of obtaining significant quantities of thermally stable compounds are attractive for use in long-lasting thermoelectric generators for remote use. 228 AC is used as an indicator of radioactivity in chemical research, as it emits high-energy electrons MeV that can be easily detected. 228 AC 228 RA mixtures are widely used as an intense gamma source in industry and medicine. Development of self glowing actinide doped materials with durable crystalline matrices is a new area of actinide utilization as the addition of alpha emitting radionuclides to some glasses and crystals may confer luminescence. Toxicity Radioactive substances can harm human health via I local skin contamination, e internal exposure due to ingestion of radioactive isotopes, and e external overexposure by beta activity and gamma radiation. Together with radium and transuranium elements, actinium is one of the most dangerous radioactive poisons with high specific alpha activity. The most important feature of actinium is its ability to accumulate and remain in the surface layer of skeletons. At the initial stage of poisoning, actinium accumulates in the liver. Another danger of actinium is that it undergoes radioactive decay faster than being excreted. Adsorption from the digestive tract is much smaller, approximately 0.05% for actinium than radium. Protactinium in the body tends to accumulate in the kidneys and bones. The maximum safe dose of protactinium in the human body is 0.03 micro C that corresponds to 0.5 micrograms of 231 pascals. This isotope, which might be present in the air as aerosol, is 2.5 times 108 times more toxic than hydrocyanic acid. Plutonium, when entering the body through air, food, or blood, e.g., a wound, mostly settles in the lungs, liver, and bones with only about 10% going to other organs, and remains there for decades. The long residence time of plutonium in the body is partly explained by its poor solubility in water. Some isotopes of plutonium emit ionizing alpha radiation, which damages the surrounding cells. The median lethal dose LD50 for 30 days in dogs after intravenous injection of plutonium is 0.32 mg per kg of body mass, and thus the lethal dose for humans is approximately 22 mg for a person weighing 70 kg. The amount for respiratory exposure should be approximately four times greater. Another estimate assumes that plutonium is 50 times less toxic than radium, and thus permissible content of plutonium in the body should be 5 micrograms or 0.3 micro c. Such amount is nearly invisible in under microscope. After trials on animals, this maximum permissible dose was reduced to 0.65 micrograms or 0.04 micro c. Studies on animals also revealed that the most dangerous plutonium exposure route is through inhalation, after which 5–25% of inhaled substances is retained in the body. Depending on the particle size and solubility of the plutonium compounds, plutonium is localized either in the lungs or in the lymphatic system, or is absorbed in the blood and then transported to the liver and bones. Contamination via food is the least likely way. 
In this case, only about 0.05% of soluble 0.01% insoluble compounds of plutonium absorbs into blood, and the rest is excreted. Exposure of damaged skin to plutonium would retain nearly 100% of it, using actinides in nuclear fuel, sealed radioactive sources or advanced materials such as self-glowing crystals has many potential benefits. However, a serious concern is the extremely high radiotoxicity of actinides and their migration in the environment. Use of chemically unstable forms of actinides in MOX and sealed radioactive sources is not appropriate by modern safety standards. There is a challenge to develop stable and durable actinide-bearing materials, which provide safe storage, use and final disposal. A key need is application of actinide solid solutions in durable crystalline host phases. Nuclear properties See also Actinides in the environment Major actinides Minor actinides Transuranics References and notes Bibliography Golub, A. M. Absa i Norganiska Himia General and Inorganic Chemistry. 2. Greenwood, Norman N., Earnshaw, Allen. Chemistry of the Elements. 2nd ed. Butterworth Heinemann. ISBN 0 08 037941 9. Myasodov, B. Analytical Chemistry of Transplutonium Elements. Moscow, Naka. ISBN 0-470-62715-8. External links Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory image of historic periodic table by Seaborg showing actinide series for the first time Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, uncovering the secrets of the actinides Los Alamos National Laboratory, Actinide Research Quarterly